all right so let's start so today we are going to uh, solve uh, a paper it is a database uh, paper not exactly a database paper but a database question we have had an intro to uh, what the database is we we had to look at all the main concepts related to the database so today we are starting with uh, one of the practicals that uh, uh that you see on your screen here right now okay so initially i'm going to go over the intro you know the what the scenario is and then we'll see what is it that we are required to do so as you could see in this uh in the scenario that has been given here i'm reading it from here this point onwards okay it says you work as an ict consultant for the tawara beach hotel you are going to test a trial database to record and extract the payroll details of the employees in the company using a suitable software package create a new database import the files n8employee.csv n8qual.csv and n8job.csv you will need to use the following information to create the tables now we do know that uh, when we have to i mean what the files that we have to import into the database are in a generic file format which is the .csv format and .csv stands for what can anybody tell me yeah it stands for comma separated comma separated values so comma separated values is basically a, a generic file format that uh, holds data where the data items are separated by a comma to differentiate between them so this is what it is when these files are imported following uh, the correct procedure of importing the files into your database program they will actually take the shape of a table and that is how it all works particularly the ones who have done ict in o levels would know what i mean exactly because you would have done it in o levels so it's the same procedure all right now if you look at the information that we have been provided with we have been provided with three files the n8 employee and it qual and and it job and we have also been uh, shown the fields as well as the data types all right so these are the field names these are all the field names given these are the data types that we need to set up and if you notice this particular point given here where it says that this particular symbol denotes the primary key all right so which field has to be set as a primary key in all these tables so you could see that uh, this there's this primary key symbol or icon i would say that is made across some fields like in this case it is here here and here this means that that in the employee table the primary key that is to be set is the pay number in the qualification table it is the code field and in the job table it's the job field that have to be set as the primary key all right okay so first things first it all begins with importing all the all the files one by one to give them the shape of a table in our database program so in the first instruction where it says using a suitable software package so um, the examiner leaves it to us that which database a uh, package or dbms database management system we would like to use to uh, to do this database question all right so in our case we will be using microsoft access to do this so of course i'll have to create a new uh, microsoft access database so for that i'm going to open up the program you also do the same on your computers so i'll open up the microsoft access database now when i open up the program i have to start a new blank database 
So, I will click on this blank database icon and another window pops up. You can also call it a dialog box, all right. Now, with databases, what is important is that a database has to be created and saved at the time, you know, you start it, all right. So, you need to save it before you, you actually start to use it. That, that's how it is with database. Compared to certain other programs where you can, you know, start your work and then maybe save a little later as well. But with databases, you know, you need to save when you create a database. So, you could see that it says, give your database a file name here. So, I'm going to type an appropriate file name. For example, I'm going to type in November 2008 P2. This is November 2008 P2. So, that's the name uh, for my database file. And at this very moment, I need to also select the directory or the folder where I would like to save this database. This is one mistake that students keep on repeating, O levels as well as A levels. That what they do is they quickly give their database, you know, sometimes they do not even give, the, give their, their database a name and they simply click on, as soon as this window shows, they click on create hurriedly. And then what database would do is database would, would give it a default name, the program such as database 1, database 2, database 3. And then it will be very difficult for you to identify which database it is that, you know, you created. So, naming the database is important. Also, selecting the directory and the folder where you would like your database to be saved is also a step that needs to be done at this point. Very, very important. So, you, you cannot ignore this. So, I am going to click on this folder icon right across. Are you guys, uh, are you guys watching this? Yeah. Okay. And then I will select the folder where I would like this to be saved. In your case, of course, you can create uh, a relevant folder where you would like to save this file. And then after having selected the required folder, I will click on OK. And now I know that my database has been saved with this particular name in the folder that I selected. Once I have done this, now I can click on create. Okay. Now, when I click on create, the database opens up, the program opens up and it now asks me to of course, do whatever it is that I have to do. Now, in, in our uh, course, we are not required to create data ourselves. We are not required to create the data from scratch because you will be attempting this question in an exam situation. Hence, no need, I mean, you would not have time to create your own data. You have already been provided with data in the form of source files or support files, which you will use uh, to perform various tasks on the data using your database program. So, when you open up the database program, you could see that there is one blank table which is open by default because the program anticipates that the first thing that you will be doing when you open up a database program is that you will be creating a table. So, we do not have to create a table from scratch. Instead, we have to import a file as a table. So, I will close this default table that is open. I will close it. and. My next step is to go through the process of importing the first uh, file which I have to and which is that file? It is the employee file. So, I am going to, I am going to import the init employee file first. So, what is the procedure? Let us see. Okay. I need to go to in the, in the menu bar at the top, I need to go to external data. So, I will click on this. Then to the extreme left of the screen, I would find an icon that says new data source. I will click on this and then I will be shown a number of options in a drop down menu. From here, I will go to the first option that says from file and here another sub menu is going to open up that has again a number of options. So, from here, I will be selecting text file because .csv files are supposed to be text files, comma separated values files are 
text file. So the type of file that I want to import into my program is a text file. So I'll click on text file. And again, a window pops up that asks me to select the text file that I want to import into my database program. So I will click on browse from here to select the file from the folder wherever it is saved. So in my case, I will go to the folder where I have uh, saved this file. So this is, this is where I have all the support files that I would be using in this particular question. So the first file that I have to import is end it employ. I'll click on this and then I'll click on open. Now the file has been selected to be imported. After having done this, I'll simply click, click on OK. Now when I click on OK, I have to notice a few things such as your day, it says, I mean, you could see that the import text wizard starts at the top, it says import text wizard. So I'm going to now go through the steps uh, in this import wizard that would actually make me import this file to give it the shape of a table in my database program. So it says your data seems to be in a delimited format. Now delimited format is like where your data items are separated by some special character or symbol such as a comma or a tab. So since CSV files are comma separated values files, the delimiter that has been used here is, is a comma. Comma is, is that symbol or is that special character that separates my data items from one another. So if you look at this, have a look at this, you could see that there are about five fields uh, in, in this particular uh, file. There's pay number, F name, S name, branch code and job code and below this you, f you would find uh, the actual data and you would see that the data has been separated with commas to differentiate between the, all these different attributes of fields. Okay, so also del the delimited option has already been selected by the wizard so I do not really need to do anything here. All right. So from here, I'll click on the next button to go to the next step in my wizard. Here again, it says, choose the delimiter that separates your fields. So the wizard automatically figures out because it has the file now, it automatically figures out which delimiter or which symbol has been used as a delimiter. Okay, so it, it's, it actually tells you that comma is the delimiter in this case in your file. So it selects it automatically. So again, I do not need to make any changes here. What is next that I have to be very particular about? That is this particular option where it says first row contains field names. Now the thing is, it is very important that we separate the field labels from the data part. You do know that a database field has two parts. There's a label and then there's the data. So the labels have to be separated from the data so, so the wizard knows uh, where the labels are and where, where the data is. If you do not check this option, you know what happens when, when you import your database file, instead of actual field names, it will be, it will be showing you field 1, field 2, field 3, field 4, because it has to differentiate between, between the fields. Yeah. So, and of course, that doesn't make any sense to you. Field 1, field 2, field 3 doesn't make any sense to us it has to be a relevant field name. So it is very important that we check this option so that our labels, field labels are separated from the rest of the data. All right. Now, after having done this, in the bottom left corner of this window, you will see a button that says advanced. You will click on this. Now, when you click on the advanced button, another window pops up that has quite a few options listed here. but all of these options are not of our concern. So we will only be focusing on the ones that are important. Like for example, uh, it suggests some, some standard formats for some things such as, you know, the date delimiter, the time delimiter is a colon. Uh, for date values, uh, you know, we'll be using four digits to represent year. Uh, des des the decimal symbol will be the dot. So these are standards, but one thing, that has to be uh, that has to be uh, paid attention to here is is the date order. 
Now the date order here has to be set to DMY. The date order has to be set to DMY. This is very important. Very quickly, what is the reason for this? The reason for this is that this uh, Cambridge O level or A level that we do is, is a UK based qualification. Yeah. So uh, in different parts of the world, different sets of data are represented or formatted in a different way. Such as if you talk about the, the, the US short date format, it is always month first, then day and then year. But when it comes to the UK short date format, it is always day first, then month, then year. So since all our source data okay, is uh, coming uh, from, of course, an examination board that is UK based. So when they include any fields that, that contain date data, they would always format it in their standard UK short date format, which is day, month, year. Yeah. Hence, for the sake of compatibility that, you know, when we import uh, such data, there should be compatibility between uh, between our, com our computer's date and the format in which the data has been provided so that the data is imported correctly without any errors. All right. So very important to change this date order to DMY. Next, we can move on to uh, looking at the field names and the data types. So I will go back to the paper again, where it depicts all the data types that we need to set for all the fields. Now, if you look at the data types that have been given for the employee table, you could see that the pay number is to be, the pay number field is to be set as, it is to be set as text, let me point it out. So the pay number is to be set as text, F name which means forename is text, S name which means surname is also text, branch code is to be set as integer and job code also is to be set as integer. Now you could say that these are, this is a generic way of giving data types. Why? Because the examiner doesn't know as to which DBMS, database management system you will be using to solve this question. So he keeps it open. Yeah. Now, when he gives the the uh, the data types in generic format, he means that you know whichever appropriate way of selecting the data type in your program is you you go with that. Yeah. So we know that when it comes to access using access as a DBMS, wherever it says text, we will invariably be selecting short text because access divides the the text data type into into two ways or into into two formats it could either be short text or long text we do not have to really use long text so we would always be going for short text so uh, if you have a look at this if you go back to our import wizard you could see that for pay number it suggests short text so we do not need to make any changes here short text long text would mean that it is actually a text data type same applies to forename surname these are both short text, so we are fine with this. Next is branch code, which is to be set as integer and job code is also to be set as an integer data type. Now, remember again, I'll, I'll quickly repeat the, the main data type when it comes to access, uh, when it comes to representing pure numeric values is number. Number has its variations in terms of the size of the numeric value that can be accommodated inside that particular field that has a, that has the number data type. So either it is integer or it is long integer or else it is double integer, long integer or double integer would accommodate a small value. Okay. Such as maybe maximum two digits or something, but when it comes to long integer, there could be four digits. All right, so that's a, that's a larger value and double is usually used with those numbers that are real numbers. If my value is a real number, which, which means that it has a decimal point, then <coughs> double is a data type that would accommodate a, a very large value. So we do not know with the decimal values as to how many digits would there be after the decimal. Hence, 
the wizard would always suggest you to set it up as a as a data type that uh, that is number but in terms of size it's you know you keep it as double so these are some things that you need to keep in our in your mind so if you look at the wizard in this case the branch code has been set as long integer as well as the job code that has been set as long integer now why is that the case the wizard just wants to make sure that it gives you uh, a size a field size that can accommodate uh, you know a value any value basically and if you change it to integer the value that you have may not be accommodated i hope you're getting this yeah so you always keep it long integer even if you have been suggested to set it up as an as an integer you as a standard assume that you have to set it up as long integer unless of course it is a decimal value in which case you will also notice that the wizard would automatically suggest you suggest to you that you should set it up as a as a double value now having set this up i will again click on okay i'm done with specifying the data types now i'll click on next another step comes up in the in the wizard which i can ignore because uh, it asks me to set up my field names and the data types which i have already done in the previous step by going to the advanced option so either way either i can go to the advanced option and do it from there or i can i can do the same thing here in this step now since i have done it done it at the at, you know by clicking on the advanced button and and having done it in in the previous stage i can skip this step all right the the benefit of actually going to that advanced option is that it allows me to look at my date format as well which is not that option is not given here so that is why it, it's better to go to that option so that if there is any other thing that needs to be changed or set up i can do it from there so i'm going to ignore this step and move on to the next one now this is the last step in the wizard that asks me to set up a primary key for my for my table and we do know that when it whenever it comes to creating a creating a table one field must be a field that contains unique values for the sake of uh, unique identification of data records and later on when it comes to creating relationships between database tables i have to define a primary key now you have been given with three options one is let access add primary key number 2 choose my own primary key number 3 no primary key there might be a situation where you may not want to set up a primary key but that's very very rare that you have to do that so as far as your course is concerned well it is it is definite that you have to set up a primary key now if you go with this option that says let access add a primary key access would add uh, a default primary key which is id okay we do not have to do that because we have already been told in the paper which field has to be set as a primary key and it is the pay the pay number field that has to be set as a primary key so what i'll do is i will go with this option that says choose my own primary key now as soon as i click on it the wizard is kind of intelligent enough to figure out as to which field out of a set of these fields contains data that is unique so it automatically suggests that pay number should be set as a primary key but what if when you go with this option that says choose my own primary key the primary key suggested by the by the import wizard is not the one that you have been asked to set up then what you'll do is you will click on this drop down button all the fields of the table will be shown and you will then select the one that you have been asked to set up got it now after having done this i'll just again click on next the last step in the import wizard is to is to save my table with a name now i always refer to this point which uh, sometimes goes goes uh, missing you know during uh, during lectures or whatever but i would like i like to emphasize upon it that when you look at the mark schemes of uh, these practical papers usually you would find a, a statement given by the examiner where it says uh, 
your, your table should be an appropriate name. And usually there is a mark for it. Giving your table an appropriate name has a mark. It's not as if, you know, he would like you to do it. He wants you to do it because he has associated a mark with it. Now here, if you look at this table, it says N8 employee. N8, we do not really know what it means, okay? So, for making you understand what N8 means here, well, what Cambridge does is that uh, since exams take place every year and support files are to be, are to be sent to centers, both for O-levels and A-levels, so they just want to make sure that the files do not get mixed up, so they add the year code with every file. The, the year that that paper uh, is for, okay, they would, with every file name, they would add the year code. Like in this case, when it says N8 employee, this means that November 2008. It's a November 2008 paper uh, file, okay, that you're using. But in our case, N8 is irrelevant. We should only be importing this file, this, this file with the name employee. N8 is irrelevant for us. So what I'll do is I'll remove this N8 part from my file name and give it, keep it more meaningful, which is employ only. And then I'll click on finish. Now, when I click on finish, another window pops up that says, do you want to import this? Uh, or do you want to save the import steps? Well, you, we do not have to really do that. So you can click on close. And in your database window, in the program of your window, on the left, this left section that you see, this particular section, is called the task pane, P-A-N-E. It's called the task pane that lists all the database objects that there are in your in your database program. So the table that we have just, uh, or the file that we have just imported as a table is now showing in my table section in the task pane. So if I want to see what this table is about, I can double click on it. It opens up and it shows me all the fields and the data that is stored in those fields. So how many fields are there? There are, there are five fields, pay number, F name, S name, branch code, job code, and underneath we have the data records. So what is a table? A table is, uh, a, table is a collection of columns and rows. Yeah. So the vertical sections of a table are, are columns, whereas the horizontal parts are, are the rows. So I, I keep on telling this that if you, if you want to uh, really count as to how many number of fields there are in your table, always do a count of the columns. And if you want to find out as to how many rows there are, you can, uh, you can always, uh, uh, actually how many records there are, I should say, you will always do a count of the, of, of the total number of rows. But with, uh, with computerized databases, you do not have to do th these things manually. If you look at the bottom of your screen, there's a navigation bar. I'm referring to this, this part. This is, this is known as the navigation bar. And if you notice here, it says one of 100. This means that there are in total 100 records in this particular table. How many records are there? 100. And right now you are on record number one out of a total number of 100 records that are there in this table. Yeah. And then, of course, there are some other uh, aids given as well in this particular navigation bar, such as uh, if you look at these buttons, you, you, you hover your pointer over these, uh, you, would, you would see that the, a tooltip appears. So it says next record. So if I click on, keep on clicking on this, I will keep on moving to the next record. Yeah. And then you see there's another button right, right next to the previous record button, which is first record. So when I click on this, I will jump to the first record in my, in my table straight away. Same applies to last record. If I want to go to the 100th record, if I simply click on this, I'll be taken to the last record in my table with a single click. And not only that, there's another icon that has this, uh, it looks something like this. this. This is the one that I'm talking about. When you take your pointer on it, it says new blank record. This is where uh, this is the button that you will click when you have to add a new record to your database table. 
So uh, these are some of the operations that we can perform using the using the navigation bar. All right. Okay. Now one more important thing, which is that a table, a database table, may have two views to it. A database table can be viewed either in the design view. You can view it as So there is a design view to a table and then there is a data sheet view to a table. These are the two views that you can use to view your table and both the views have a different purpose. Anyone in this class knows the difference between uh, the design view and the data sheet view of a table, I mean in terms of the purpose of these views, which view is it that I see on my screen right now? This is the data sheet view, exactly. Now what is the purpose of the data sheet view? Okay, to view the data, actually the data sheet view is where I can open up a table and view all the data records, but not, not only that, but I can do some editing as well in the data sheet view. And what editing is it that I am talking about? Well, it is what if I want to add a new record? That is like editing my table. If I want to delete any existing record which I feel I do not need anymore, so I'll, I can delete it here. And I can also make any changes to any record or records wherever it is necessary. Yeah. So in this case, say for instance, if, uh, if well, there is an employee who has been transferred to a different branch with a different branch code. I will need to make that change here across that employee. I will have to type in a different branch code. So that would be editing or modifying my data according to my requirement. Yeah. So this is what the purpose of the data sheet view is. Now the other view which is the design view, uh, if you look at the, if you go to home, the home tab from the menu bar, look at the leftmost icon. This is like a this is like a toggle button. Toggle button as in it's it sort of switches from design to data sheet view and data sheet to, to design. So when I am on the data sheet view, it will automatically change to design view. When I am on design view, it will automatically change to the data sheet view. So right now I am being shown the design view icon. So as soon as I click on it, I am shown the design view of my table. Now what is, what is the design view? Design view is basically meant for showing the structure of the table. Design or the? It is the actual structure. Stru structure, in, in, structure in the sense that it shows me how I have designed that table. In terms of, you know, uh, you know what are the main characteristics uh, that, that I need to look at when, when I am in the design view? Well, the field names, I can see the actual field names, I can see the, I can see the field names, I can see the data types, let me, yeah, I can see the data types, I can see which field has been set as the primary key. So if you look at the field, the pay number field, on the left of it you would see that, you, you would see that icon of uh, a key. This means that the pay number is the field that has been set as the primary key in this particular table. and then. In the later part, in the section below, you would see a lot of uh, general properties that I can change for my data. Any additional properties that I would like to, to apply to any, any of the database fields, I can set them up from, from this particular section, all right? Such as field size, if I want to set up uh, a field to be a certain number of characters, I can do that from here. Then another important thing is like formats, I can set up formats for the way I want to display my data such as if I want to set up format for a date field, a particular format. Then I can apply validation rules which are very important to, uh, to ensure that, which are very important to ensure that at the time of input, I am inputting data which is, uh, which is correct and uh, authentic, accurate, the data that I would like to actually input so I can apply validation. So these are the additional 
field properties and I can set up. So this is all part of structuring a table. Yeah, I cannot make changes to, excuse me, I cannot make changes to field names in the data sheet view. I cannot do anything to data types. I cannot, um, I cannot uh, sort of, you know, set up any additional field properties. The view, the purpose of the data sheet view, as, as I told you, is to just view the data and do some editing. Whatever changes I need to do to the design or the structure of the table will have to be done in the design view. So now if you look at the icon on the left, since now I am in the design view, the icon has already been changed to the data sheet view. So it is like a toggle button. When I click on this, I am taken to the data sheet view. I click, click, click on it again, I am taken to the design view. So this is something that I will be using a lot uh, in, my, in my lecture. So you know, if I, while, while we are doing a question, if I ask you to go to the design view, you should know what do I mean by that. If I ask you to switch to the, to the data sheet view, okay, so uh, I would expect you to know how to do that. All right, so well, we have successfully managed to import one of the files and give it the shape of a table in my database program. There are two more that uh, we have to do. So this is something that we will be doing in our next class. We will be importing these two tables in our next class and then of course we will be taking it on from here. Is it all clear? Any question? Anyone? Anything confusing? Okay, that's great.